ahead to a new season of Texas State softball in the 2024. Brain Freeman along with Kat Osterman, three-time Olympian and a four-time Big 12 Pitcher of the Year, one of the all-time greats. And such a pleasure, Kat, to be talking softball with you and an exciting time of year, too, with, uh, with that time of year here once again. Yeah, it's always exciting for spring to roll around and um, for the teams to get on the field. And I know as an athlete, you're excited to play someone other than your own teammates. So mm -hmm. um, nice to see that, you know, the Bobcats are, are poised pretty well going into this season. And Kat, you know this program maybe better than anybody. You played against it, then you coached for the program. With, with Ricky yeah. Woodard. Now you're part of the broadcast team here at ESPN+. Plus. What has it been like for you to observe the consistency this program has established? You know, it's pretty remarkable. I think it's hard to be as consistent as Coach Woodard's teams have been. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people will look and, you know, you take comparisons to maybe some bigger schools and not necessarily see how consistent they've been, but just, you know, they were making regionals or being one game away from it um, when I was playing. And then obviously being here, watching how she works and the standards she sets. And I think that's really what her consistency is, is a testament to the standard she sets and that she never wavers from that. So when mm -hmm. athletes come in, if you, if you don't live up to the standard, it's going to be hard to make it. But at the same time, those that make it, they perform really well. And her team's really have been able to come together as of late, and that consistency is shown over time with all of the postseason appearances. You know, I remember in 2022, the team had a really, really good year, some marquee wins, but you fast forward to the end of the season, their name wasn't called mm -hmm. for the NCAA yeah. tournament. Last year, the Sun Belt got one at-large bid, it was Texas State's. How big do you think that was for this program moving forward? It was really big because, yeah, 2022 was a big disappointment for them. And I think sometimes when you talk to Coach Woodard, she feels like almost those years could have been reversed. They could have gotten in in 22 and mm -hmm. not in 23. Um, but there's always something different that's in play when the committee selects. But for this group to have made regionals last year with 21 athletes returning, um, it makes them hungry to be able to continue to push for not just a regional appearance, but can they get to the regional final and have a chance at getting out to a super for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. um, when you have so, as much experience as Coach Woodard has on her roster right now, that has to be a viable goal for them. And so um, it's a stepping stone, but it was really big for them to make the regional last year and have a good appearance at that mm -hmm. regional. You know, you've been around the game again your entire life. Have you ever seen this before where the entire roster is back from the year prior? I have not. I have not. Usually you have one, maybe two athletes that, you know, graduate or mm -hmm. just decide it's time for them to, to move on. But to have an entire roster back, I have never seen. Yeah, so really unique for this Bobcat team this season. A lot to come in our preview show. Coming up later, Cat's going to visit with head coach Ricky Water. Up next, though, we talk with a couple of the student athletes, Sarah Vanniford and Jessica Mullins. Our season preview special continues right after this. Strength, intensity, honor, heart. These are the qualities that make a champion in the gym, in the game of life, and as Hayes County employees, are you ready to suit up and take the field? Start your career with Hayes County today. Become a champion. Hayes County, Texas. Join the winning team. The top hitter from last year's team, a second team, all Sunbelt Conference, and a former Sunbelt Conference 
freshman of the year as well, Sarah Vanderford. So many accolades throughout her career, and she joins us now in the season preview special. Welcome back, Brand Freeman with Vandy, Sarah Vanderford. And again, all conference honors for you a year ago. Sarah, what did you take away from uh, the 2023 season? Um, you know, I think most importantly, we have a chance to be really good. Um, not losing anybody and letting everybody come back and, you know, having the same pretty much core group that we've had, um, I think is only going to help us. And so I'm really excited about seeing where this year goes and what we kind of learned as a group from last year. Kind of, you know, going back to last season a little bit more as well, for the team to go to the NCAA tournament as well, how big was that after missing out the year prior? Yeah, I think uh, if I had to pick a year to go, um, it would have been, you know, obviously the two that I went. But last year was so important because – we like the cl the class who's leaving was would be the last class to go. Mm -hmm. So I think anytime you can get the younger kids to have experience and let them be a part of that process and kind of see what it's like because regionals is a different feel. Postseason is a different feel as a whole. So mm -hmm. I think letting them get that experience um, is not only going to help us for this year, but also will help the Carmen Basses, the Cazzarotis. You know, whenever they're trying to lead this group to the same things that we were so you know I go back to your freshman season and that team was loaded you know Tara Oldman Haley McKay part of that team Kat Krennic as well I mean the list goes on and on about the, the vets that were on that team mm -hmm. and you were kind of the young person on that team mm -hmm. but now you're a vet so mm -hmm. how does it feel now for your career to kind of come full circle I think that's exactly what it is you know um I think I was set up with a great group of people and I don't think I will ever be able to thank them enough for what they did for me and what they did for this program. Um, so I think after that, you know, I can only hope that I've done the same for them um, because, again, the standard is the standard, and I just hope leaving here that it's still the same and that they would be proud of what I've done. So, it, you know, you say proud of what you've done, and we look at your numbers, you know, throughout your career, and I mean, you're, you're top three in almost every major category. Home runs, RBI, batting average, the, the program's all-time leader in doubles hit. Is it kind of surreal for you to have had the, the success that you have had as you kind of look back and on the numbers you put together? Um, you know, I think it's great. I think all the accolades are great. I think the season numbers are great. But I think more importantly, just as I've grown up, the relationships that have come out of this place and just the, like, personal legacy, you know, that I've left, I hope is bigger than the numbers because – yeah, the numbers are great, and obviously they've helped us win. So, mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's been an honor. I've been blessed. Um, it wasn't easy, though. You know, it takes hard work every single day. But I think, more importantly, the people who have been there and gotten me out of the wrong mentality, so to speak, you know, like I think I, I just am so much more thankful for that and hope that that's what I'm giving back to these younger ones. Well, again, by the time it's all said and done, Sarah Vanderford will go down as one of the best hitters in the history of a really rich Texas State program. Sarah, thank you so much, and best of luck this coming season. Thanks, Brent. Thanks for having me. All right, you got it. When we come back, we'll talk with one of her teammates, Bobcat pitcher Jessica Mullins, back with more of our season preview right after this. People are always searching for what's next at Texas State University. We are driving what's next. And next is now. When you buy a home at Kissing Tree, the good times start as soon as you sign your contract. Explore our amazing property. Try a new workout or just get to know the neighbors. Whether you're building or choosing an inventory home, you can unlock the fun of our 55 plus community before you ever unlock your new front door. Call today to learn about big savings on select homes and home sites. Join the mobile fan club that sends you Texas State Athletics news, scores, and highlights as they happen. Simply text TXST to 83200. Breaking news, instant scores, information, and special offers will be sent to you via text alert. Visit TXST.com slash texts to customize the sports alerts you want to receive. Join the Texas State Mobile Fan Club by texting TXST at 83200 now. We 
we've showed you the accolades for Sarah Vanderford. Now we'll look at the awards for Jessica Mullins, who was named first team all Sunbelt Conference a year ago, two seasons ago, the Sunbelt Conference Pitcher of the Year. Welcome back to our season preview special, along with Mully, Jessica Mullins. I'm Brant Freeman. And uh, Jessica, again, you know, we look at this past season in particular, get first team all conference, and what is a loaded Sunbelt in terms of pitching. What did you take away from last year? I felt like overall as a team, we competed very well, but we were also pretty immature, even though we had uh, we had a very young team, you know, and I feel mm-hmm. like we just had some building to do. Um, but overall, I feel like our team this year is going to be far, more, far better caliber and mm-hmm. just we're going to be able to keep going on. You know, in 2022, you had a really good season and a good run as well in the Sun Belt Tournament all the way to the finals. But you didn't have your name called for the NCAA tournament. I think you're one of the first four out. And it was really difficult for the team to not have their name called. Last year, that moment does happen for the program. You get to a regional. What did that mean? I think uh, during the 2022 season, whenever our name wasn't called, we just kind of spent that whole next year with a little chip on our shoulder and uh, came back for 2023 and, Mm -hmm. you know, decided, okay, we need to get to work. Mm -hmm. And we did the work and... We got us where we're supposed to be, and we're just going to keep fighting and keep advancing more and more and hoping to get farther this year. I still remember your debut at Texas State as a freshman. Abilene Christian, you throw a no-hitter you know, in that game. Um, and fast forward to now, you're on the verge of 600 strikeouts. Your next one will be number 600, and your next win will be your 70th. You know, we, we opened this segment by looking back at all the accolades you've earned along the way. As you kind of reflect on your career to this point, all starting with that no-hitter against Abilene Christian, what has it all meant to you? Honestly, I don't really think about the accolades. I think about how much I've grown as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just a little immature freshman, didn't really know where she was going to go in life. And now I'm very proud to say that I have grown as a woman and as a person in general. And I have my life planned out. And I'm super excited to see what the next step is after college. But I have some business to take care of first. There have been been so many great figures in and around this program. Certainly The Rock has been your head coach, Ricky Water. But for you, you took over for a, a legend, arguably the best pitcher in the history of the program, and Randy Rupp. In fact, the two of you have played at the same high school. Uh, you both wear the same number here of four. And Kat Osterman, who's a part of this preview show, of course, was one of the ones that was you know uh, on this staff, kind of helping to recruit you as well. What have the what have the figures like that, Randy Rupp, Kat Osterman, kind of meant to you in your development? I honestly have looked up to them for so long, and I kind of just said to myself, you know, I want to become them. I want to be a legacy like them. Mm -hmm. They have all just been great role models to the younger kiddos out there and just people who who want to be in our spot right now. And I just wanted to become that because I I knew that I had the capability to. And so, yeah, I just... Did the work, and I mm-hmm. got here. So so you're running it back this year. You know, everybody from a year ago is back this season, which is unprecedented, by the way. I can't recall uh, a team from any sport having done that. So what, what are the goals for a team that has so much experience back this year? I think our main goal is to maintain focus every single game mm-hmm. and just make sure we get farther than where we did last year. I just... I think we're all just really hungry to be able to get more. So that's that's our main thing is just to stay locked in every single day, practice or game. Well, in a program that has had so many great pitchers over the years, we're visiting with another one, Jessica Mullins, getting ready for her fifth and final season here at Texas State. Mully, thanks so much, and best of luck this coming year. Thank you so much, Brian. All right, that again, Jessica Mullins. When we come back, we're going to visit with one of her mentors, Kat Osterman. She visits with head coach Ricky Woodard. Back with more of our preview special right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, the power of a word. The anticipation, the adrenaline, the hair on the back of their necks rising. The crowd, the score rising. Greatness rising, the sun rising. Sometimes a word is best left all by itself. The Sun Belt Conference, 14 universities, 10 states rising. We know that education drives us forward. For over 80 years, UFCU has ensured that the higher education community has a financial partner you can trust on campus and beyond. UFCU, empowering education. Come on and let me help. It's a brand new day. Open up a little happiness today. So I can feel something new. Yeah. 
people are always searching for what's next. At Texas State University, we're always imagining it, making it, creating it, and when we need to, breaking it. Next moves us forward and turns challenge into achievement. At Texas State University, we are driving what's next. And next is now. Welcome back to our season preview. I am Pat Osterman and I am joined with head coach Ricky Woodard. Now, Coach Woodard, last year, obviously a successful end getting to regionals, being a couple uh, plays away from being in the finals of that. Um, having had plenty of time to reflect on it, talk to us a little bit about your thoughts of last season. Yeah, I think the good part about last season was that it made us a little hungrier. Um, I think we finally got a taste of what could be. So now it's a question of can we actually make that happen? Talking about, you know, we'll talk, we missed regionals in 2022, but you were there in 21. Talk about with the staff changes and just how you've been recruiting the direction your program's headed right now. Yeah, I feel like this is as good of a team as I've ever put on the field. You know, and I know I've said that a few times along the way, but um, when you return all 21 players from a team from last year and all your starters, um, I think it really is going to be a difference maker year for us. Um, they've been fun to be around. Um, they know the game. They know what's going on now. Um, I don't have this voice because I'm screaming and yelling at them. Um, and so it's, it's been a fun group to, to be around. And I think um, it's, it's proven that the staff that I put together has worked um, along with the players that, that we've been able to retain here. You talked about, you mentioned you return all 21 players. Obviously, you had a freshman class that came in. So can you talk to us, one, about who you think in the returners is going to carry your team and what freshmen do you think are going to come in and make an impact? Yeah, I mean, man, I can give you a whole list of returners that have a, a chance to make an impact. Um, you know, Carmen Bass has hit over 600 just in these the spring scrimmages that we've been doing. Um, Sarah Vanderford's obviously hitting well. Uh, Piper Randolph's hitting well. Anna Jones is hitting well. Um, I can give you a whole list of kids that, that we hope um, are going to have stellar seasons. Um, you know, then on the pitching side of it, obviously, return of Jessica Mullins, Tori McCann, um, you know, Carson, Carson Pierce, you know, all three of those are seniors now and at the end of their career, so they have a chance to be really good. Um, then on top of that, we threw in a freshman, Maddie Azua, out of Round Rock High School that we expect to, to be um, just as good, if not better, than, than anybody we've ever had here. That's awesome. Um, talk about what would you say is the strength of the team this year? Other than experience, since we know 21 of them <laughs> come back. Yeah, I think that is the strength, though. You know, I mean... You know, they get along well. Um, they understand what it's going to take. They trust each other. They trust us. Um, I think that's the biggest thing is that it just has a different feel to it. And I think it comes with trust, um, whether that comes with experience um, or just knowing each other. I don't know which, but I like the feel of it. Talk to us about playing in the Sun Belt. Obviously, you added some new teams last year, um, but your, your Sun Belt schedule and what it's going to take to uh, finish at the top. Man, the Sun Belt is tough. Um, you know, I say that every year, but I just think it gets – keeps getting tougher and tougher um, you know you always have the raging Cajuns um, you know they've done a really good job of just holding the line here and it's tough to break that line um, South Alabama's been good Marshall jumped on board last year South Alabama's always good and then you add a JMU to the mix yeah I mean we finished fourth last year and, and it was a dog fight to get to fourth um, and that just tells you how good the conference is in my opinion now when we can finish fourth and get a regional at large bid can you talk about that, you guys finishing fourth? Obviously, there were a lot more at-large bids um, for the Sun Belt last year. Can you talk about that and just how the conference has grown for it to be more multi-bid league than just one or two? Yeah, I think, you know, you go back a couple years ago and we got four teams in. Um, you know, last year we did deal only up with the two, two of us, but I think there could have been four of us real easily. So um, I think that's one of the things we talk a lot about in our head coaches meetings is how do we keep growing our conference and getting, you know, four teams, five teams, six teams in? Because I think that's where we're headed. The question is, you know, how do, how do we do that and be fair to everybody in the conference at the same time? Coach, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for giving us a little preview on what to expect, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Today we're out here at Spring Lake, which is one of my favorite places, and we are going to be catching some turtles and some fish through different sorts of like trapping techniques that we're learning that are associated with our major, so it's been really cool. This class is huge for us wildlife majors that want to go into the field of like wildlife biology research and field work because it's giving us techniques that we will actually use on the job. So it's preparing us for a career that is sooner than we think it is actually.
Our passion and our pursuit of ranching was from inherent love of land and an appreciation for Mother Nature and, and for us to help spread more thought-minded land management by demonstrating the powerful effects of regenerative agriculture. Our time at Texas State was probably the first time in our lives that we really explored nature. That was the first time where I was not only able to find out who I was, but shape who I wanted to become. Ray Freeman back with Kat Osterman, who just got done visiting with head coach Ricky Woodard. Now here to wrap up our season preview special. And Kat, with that, we take a look at the schedule for the Bobcats. And again, RPI talk is always so big, right? Because you want to get, you want to be in the conversation for an at-large bid. You look at Texas State's schedule this year against Power 5 opponents, 11 of them on the schedule, but 8 of them at home. And that's huge. Coach Woodard always makes a very strong schedule, and anytime she can bring Power 5 teams into San Marcos, she tries to, one, the home crowd here mm -hmm. um, at Bobcat Stadium is just so electric and the, the players feed off of it, but two, just being able to showcase what this campus and what her program is to Power 5 programs. A lot of them respect her um, so easily make the trip here to San Marcos, but those eight games at home are going to be huge, and if the Bobcats can win a significant amount of those, they're going to be sitting themselves up really well going into conference play. And some of those home opponents include Texas, Texas A&M, Baylor, the, uh, the Big Ten. Penn State comes in here for a three-game series as well. Kind of fast-forwarding, though, now to the Sun Belt schedule, and what really sticks out to me are those series at home. Louisiana, Troy, and Marshall, three really good programs, especially the Raging Cajuns, to get them here in San Marcos, that's huge. Yeah, again, the home crowd is going to be an advantage for Texas State. You know, we know Louisiana travels well, so they're going to bring in their crew. But anytime you can be here at home taking them on, you want to be. And the same goes for Troy. Mm -hmm. um, I think they probably are um, underrated as far as how they play at home a lot of times, or I should say underappreciated, um, yeah. because it is really hard to go into Troy and take a series. And so to have them here, and a lot of times that Troy series has been the series that kind of tips Texas State one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And so for them to have them at home and hopefully take the series here in San Marcos will be um, a telltale sign for them. Well, Kat, always a pleasure talking softball with you. Looking forward to the start of a new year. Can't wait. All right, that again, Kat Osterman. And that's going to wrap up our preview of the uh, 2024 season for Texas State foot softball. Looking forward to coverage with Kat throughout the year and others on ESPN+. Plus. For Kat, I'm Brad Freeman. Enjoy the upcoming season. And remember, as always, to eat them up.